What's up everybody, Anton here from Faceprep and in this particular RPA tutorial, we are going to learn how to use the email automation command in Automation Anywhere. Now, typically when it comes to email, there are three primary actions that are usually performed, right? You either read an email, that is you access the contents of an email, you delete an email and thirdly you send an email. Now, sending email is part of a different command, not under the email automation command. There's a different command called the send email command and we have separate tutorial for that, so we link uh, that tutorial in the uh, description, you can have a look at that. But in the email automation command, we're going to focus on two primary things. One is how to access the emails, how to read the emails that is. And second thing is how to delete emails. Now that deleting emails you can do uh, based on certain conditions if you want to as well. Now, um, before we dive in, before we dive in and have a look at the command, just want to uh, kind of bring to your uh, attention that we need to acknowledge and appreciate the whole point uh, of an email automation command in automation anywhere in the sense that a lot of things right uh, at the workplace get triggered by an email right the requests that come in and if you can structure these requests if they're the requests are in a structured format then it becomes easy to start an entire automation process right an entire workflow a business use case can begin with an email trigger so it becomes very important this this particular command becomes very important and powerful to you know completely take care of an entire process everything can start from just a simple email right and we look at how, exactly how that can happen in this particular video tutorial so let's get to it now uh, pretty straightforward you have email automation as you can see is uh, the command here and under that you have three sub commands which are pretty self-explanatory you have get all messages where you get all messages uh, in your inbox in particular and uh, you can delete all messages so if you click on the delete all messages uh, command all the messages in your inbox get deleted one by one and you can delete one message right based on condition you can delete one message and we'll see how each of these work um, we won't see how delete all messages work because that will take, take a lot of time and B it just does that you delete all messages, it's just going to delete all messages in your inbox. The other two we're going to look at, all right? So when it comes to email automation, there are certain things that you need to keep in mind. So before we get into using it, for example, if I just open this, you'll have a, an understanding of what I'm saying. As you can see, there are certain settings or configuration uh, to happen. That is, you will have to give your host name, your username, your password. Uh, and all of these details have to be filled in and that is the settings part of it that I'm talking about the email settings or configuration if you want to call it that now there are two very important parts one of it is on your screen here but we'll come to this in a bit the second one is where you have to go to your gmail account and you know fix a few settings over there just one setting actually a small thing you'll have to do on your gmail account which you are probably uh, using in order to send things over here right so let's get to that first so just quickly going to uh, the email all right this is the email that we're going to use so point is in the account that you're going to use in order to read the messages so for example i want to read these messages over here so what we're going to do is that we're going to click on the uh, grid icon here and go to account so if you go to account you get to this page and here you can go to security and once you're on the security page you scroll down you have an option which says less secure app access it is on for me it's most likely off for you if you haven't turned it on yet it's going to be off by default what it generally says is i mean it's a security feature right so to ensure that emails are securely accessed accessing email is recommended through gmail itself the gmail client right you need to understand a few things here client and server there's something called mail servers which access which helps you access the emails that you have how do you access the emails from the mail server you use a an email client like gmail or outlook or all of these are email clients right now what gmail says is that except for gmail if you try to use something else to access the web server then what's going to happen is that that the the access is less secure all right it is susceptible to you know um security issues right so it does not recommend you to turn this on which is allow less secure apps to access it now in this case we want automation anywhere to access uh, the uh, gmail server right 
and uh, that's why you have to set this as on this has to be on if look at this this grayed out version is the off part it's off now you have to make sure that it's on and automatically it gets updated as you can see here down at the bottom left corner now once you do this that's the first part of your configuration which is done the second part of the configuration is uh, right here in the particular command itself as you can see in the dialog box it's asking you for a few details here host name now again i spoke of the mail server right you can find out more about it it's outside the scope of this discussion but highly recommend you to understand what a server is what a client is what are protocols what are port numbers very simple things to understand please go ahead and uh, do that now in order to uh, you know fill in these details the second part of the settings is that we have to give the host name of the server what is the server in this case we have to use the imap server so over here as you can see this is the link to the mail server imap.gmail.com so i'm going to use that over here so just in case you're wondering this is basically recommended by gmail right i mean gmail gives these email settings if you want to access your emails you're going to use imap as the protocol protocol is just a bunch of rules that allows you to communicate allows automation anywhere to communicate with the mail server the communication happens through a protocol called imap so you can learn more about imap there's also another another pro protocol called pop3 can you see here pop pop is another protocol post office protocol now this protocol i mean pretty much does the same thing it helps you access the email on your particular server right but um, they work slightly differently in case of imap it's a more modern protocol where you get to access email from multiple devices so we're going to use imap and imap is basically recommended this there's, there's not going to be any reason for you to really need pop in that sense uh, but in any case uh, just to continue over here imap settings by gmail is provided in this particular if you search for it gmail settings for imap and gmail settings for smtp smtp again is to send emails imap is to read your email so this host name imap.gmail.com is what i have entered here right next username and password is basically the username and password of your email account right so i'm going to quickly enter that over here uh, we're going to use uh, this email address i'm just going to drop in the password as well all right that's done it server does use secure connection ssl so the gmail server does use that i'm going to use imap not pop3 i told you the reason you can you can find out more about it the port numbers also mentioned over here it's 993 so i'm going to enter 993 and there you go my second part of the settings i'm done with it first setting was on gmail on the account second uh, was over here where I was giving the details of the email server and, and I'm done. Now, do I want to read all the messages or read messages or unread messages? I can tick that. And, um, and I'm going to use plain text in this case, not HTML, because I don't want to, uh, uh, when I'm receiving my messages, I just want the text over there. I don't want to know what's behind the text as I don't want to have access to the source code there of the HTML. I just want the plain text and hence I'm going to choose that. So depending on your uh, what you require, you can choose either of these things. Um, if there's an attachment to your email, it will be stored in your local system and you will have to give um, give a particular uh, destination for, uh, for it to store. So I'm just going to choose the desktop over here and just keep it as desktop. Um, overwriting files is basically if, if you happen to read the same email over and over again and there seems to be an attachment the attachment will be overridden right then overwritten right so that's that's broadly it if you uh, can see we're done with the settings here now i just have to click on save and just see what happens get all messages it starts a loop and it makes a lot of sense to start a loop right it'll loop through each and every message in your inbox if your inbox have, has 100 uh, uh, emails then this loop will iterate for 100 times that, that's that's broadly it and what you want to do uh, within the uh, iterations each iteration very very important over here is to understand that for each and every iteration we have access to the data of one particular email in the first iteration you have the access to the first email in your list that is the most recent email that you have received in the second iteration you'll get access to the second email right and when you get when i say that you get access to the first email or second email what i mean is that for example in the first iteration you get access to certain uh, um, 
data, right? You want to read your email, obviously, right? So what are the kind of things that you can read from each and every email? When you go through the first iteration, you get to uh, see all of these seven uh, uh, data points from uh, the email, right? You can see who who's it from, who's it sent to, which is you. Is there somebody who CC'd? What's the subject line? Is there a message? And what is the message rather? Uh, when was it received the date as well as the time so these are system variables you don't have to do anything automation anywhere has done it for us it loop through each and every email in the uh, list and while it is in a particular iteration like in the first iteration it is going to focus on the first email and all of these details of the first email are going to be accessible at that point in time at, in that iteration quite obviously in the first iteration you cannot get the details of the hundredth email you can get only the data of the first email in the first iteration. So one by one, you, you're going to, uh, you know, ha get access to each of these uh, messages and using those messages or, or using those messages, you can do whatever you quite uh, want to do as far as your business use case is concerned. So let's quickly do that. I just, I'm going to, you know, uh, bring in a message box here and display a message. I've already created the message. So uh, this is, this here is the message. Now, let me just quickly take you through it. It's nothing but I have some text over here, time, and I have the system variable, email received time. This is the system variable. If you have to quickly find it, all you have to do is click on the function F2 uh, buttons and uh, scroll down under email, you'll get all of these options, right? You just have to select them and uh, you'll get them in the list. So that's, that's probably it. I mean, it's not uh, too complicated to get your email. Uh, system variables so that's that's uh, these are things that we're going to look at time date from to CC subject and message right let's have a look I'm just going to save this and uh, that's pretty much it let's uh, you know let's loop through it and see how this works let me just save it let's call it uh, email automation command with a single M all right so here we are um, just saving this and now let's just run it and see if this works. So the bot is uh, going to start any minute now. All right, here's our bot, it started. And uh, all right, great. So we have gone through the first iteration and just to give you some reference, let's just actually have a look at the email as well. So this is the message box which has given us this is a critical security alert. Now, not uh, surprising. I, I did go to less secure app access and you know switched that out around. Every time that does it because it's a security uh, um, feature, uh, it will you know throw up a notification in your email. So that's what's happening. Time, all right. So this is the time. This is the date in this particular format. You have from. It's come from no reply at accounts.google.com. Keep an eye on the uh, format, right? It's given the name of the sender, whatever you find over here. And it also has uh, mentioned the email address over here. Okay, the two is pretty straightforward. It just has the email address, nothing fancy. There's no, no one CC'd, so this is empty. Subject is critical security alert. As you can see, critical security alert. The body, right, which is the message itself. We have to have a look over here. You can see that the body has uh, this data, right? Access for less secure apps settings has been turned on, if you can see over here. And uh, yeah, face prep, RPA. Let me just, okay, this is coming in the way, but I, I hope you get the point, right? So all of this is actually here in my particular message. This is the plain text format, and I am able to read the first email in my inbox let's see what else we have i just clicked on okay i should probably get the next one now yeah any moment now all right as you can see this is the next message in your uh, list and this is basically the second message application process for a degree in law and uh, the text is basically lorem ipsum so as you can see that's exactly what it is here so it's actually clearly reading each and every uh, a part of the email that you have everything that you need to know about the email that has been sent is neatly captured in uh, system variables which you can access and obviously you can uh, do multiple things along with this right you can um, get the body based on the subject and use it to parse some data and create 
other documents and send a notification somewhere all of that can happen right from here right so this is broadly how you go about reading messages i'm just going to um, close the command over here let's look at something else now let's look at uh, the delete command so just aborting it all right so let me just go back here and try to delete a message now i'm just going to delete the first message the alert that i uh, received so for that to happen i'm also going to put a quick uh, if statement right we we know this loop will go on and on until there is an uh, you know until the point that there is um, what do you call that thing uh, until the point that there is there are messages in the inbox right so what i'm going to do is i just want to delete the first one so i'm going to say if variable counter is greater than 1 okay see what happens with the counter variable as you would know is that every time things loop when, when a counter inside a loop behaves very um, predictably what happens is that in the first iteration of the loop the counter has the count one second iteration it has the count two and so on that's it so what i'm saying is that if the counter is greater than one then what i'm going to do is i'm going to that is if from the second uh, um, from the second iteration onwards what i'm going to do is i'm going to simply close the loop right i'm going to end the loop there or rather exit the loop right i'm going to exit the loop so i'm not going to do further iterations i'm just going to stop it right there and let me just remove this message box what i'm going to do is because i just want to delete the first message after i do the check after i do the check if it is greater than one which is from the second email onwards just exit the loop but if it's less than one or, or less than or equal to one what's going to happen is that it's going to delete a message that's what i want to do so i'm going to just uh, click on a delete message what does delete message do it just deletes a message you don't have to give any information whatsoever similarly delete all messages also you just have to give the details earlier details just to tell them which account it is but broadly all it will do is it will delete all your messages right either all your messages all your read messages or all your unread messages this is broadly what's going to happen so in this case i just want to delete a message based on a condition what's my condition i mean i'm just looping through it essentially this brings about a condition that delete my first message only right so that's what we're trying to achieve over here let's go ahead and run this thing right just saving it over here and running it let's see if it manages to delete this first message from our inbox okay so here we go it's uh, started here i'll just shift to the inbox while it may not happen right in front of our eyes i think on refresh it should definitely uh, show you what's happening so looks like we are in for some wait all right the task has run i can still see the message here though it hasn't gotten deleted at least it hasn't refreshed yet so let me just refresh and see if uh, indeed it is uh, you know deleted or not it has actually it is it's gone right and uh, one thing to note is that it will not get saved in trash also it's deleted completely you'll not find the message in trash if you go to trash you'll not find it over there it's gone forever so keep that in mind when you delete a message in uh, automation anywhere through automation anywhere through uh, the delete a message command it truly gets deleted right so that's something to note so yeah that's pretty much it when it comes to email automation and um, while this is a simple command you have a bunch of settings to uh, be done a couple of settings to be done a uh, simple enough command to use a uh, whole point is that uh, you have to use this in conjunction with other things and that's where uh, it's it's uh, value and it's uh, worth truly comes through right so that's something to keep in mind and i hope this was uh, clear if you have any questions you can probably put them down in the comments below thank you hey youtube if you found this video to be useful then go ahead and like this video and if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet then go ahead and do so right now see you later